Hello one, hello all, welcome to what should be the home for Will I Like It reviews for the at least near future. Um, it's been a while. Uh, I should be as close to relaxed as possible as far as filming locations is concerned. This, while not done, is where I should be for the foreseeable future. Anywho, if you've been following my personal story, you'll know that I said that 2016 would probably be the last time that things would be a little volatile and tumultuous. But 2017 was just an utter departure in every sense of the word. I spent most of the year in Denmark, and that meant that I couldn't see films at quite the same rate that I did previously. The two previous versions of this list, the list, also known as CPC's Films in Blank Year, Well, each other time, it was over 100 films per list. This time, I had to really bust my ass and struggle. I think I saw like 30 films in the last month, Uh, maybe even more, because I think I was at like 45 in late October, and this year's list will be a tight 80. So that means I haven't seen stuff like Wonder Woman, Beauty and the Beast, Justice League. Those, Those films just won't be on this list, I'm sorry. Here's to the list that I do have. Another thing to note is uh, this will probably be the most bizarre as far as release dates is concerned, because like I said, I spent most of my time in Denmark. You may see some films that appear to be late 2016 releases to you, but because I was in Denmark, I wasn't able to see them until 2017. So this list may have a couple of movies where you're like, wait, that's that's really old. but. It's my year. It's the 2017 films as I saw them as I was available to. That's a lot of quoting. Anywho, on to my least favorite film that I saw in 2017. I could make a bunch of different jokes here about this being the film equivalent to 9-11 if it weren't titled 9-11. Um, if it didn't feature such star power, perhaps I wouldn't put so much on it. But when you have Charlie Sheen, who's granted hasn't done anything spectacular recently, especially in film, uh, and then Whoopi Goldberg, uh, I expect a little bit more than a a really, really not good made-for-TV movie that is kind of offensive to anybody who's been around that that time period and or knows people who survived and or perished through that film. Got an attitude in there. High student, low TV movie rate. And I guess I expect a little bit more when you have Odame Brown and Ricky Vaughn in the movie. You're full of shit! Fuck you! This guy is in 9-11. And no, he didn't play one of the planes. Well, well, let me tell you, for all the the hubbub and fuss that was made in the horror community for this film, this could be 2017's version of Ghostbusters because, um, yeah, for all the the stink that was thrown about this movie and the, the, the stuff behind the process of the film, just not worth any of that energy. Um, Really, really kind of a a lost film and just all over the place and doesn't make sense. Apparently it takes place between one and two. Spoiler, spoiler, the guy's gonna make it because there's a sequel. Um, Yeah, it's just, with the budget that this movie has, which is, it's, it's way lower than some lower budgeted films, um, just, just sloppy. I, I want to call it lazy, but apparently this guy busted his ass to get it done and just, nope, nope, thank you, nope. <sighs> All right, so I've, I've seen this a second time since ranking this list, and <clears throat> I can say that I'm perhaps being a little harsh if what I think about the film is correct, but I don't. I'm going simply on what I've seen versus everything else that I've seen. And as far as 
a complete film experience is concerned. Ice Cream Truck is a film that, uh, thanks to Blood Brother Lee from Drum Dum, um, there was a bit of hype behind this film. Lee, Lee, Lee so gloriously made proclamations about this film. This movie feels like an homage to John Carpenter's Halloween without copying it. And like Halloween, this movie leans more on uh, tension than it does on gore. There is some blood in this movie, but it's not overused. It's only used when necessary. I'd say most of this movie is tension-based. What, what the heck are you talking about? Yeah, so when somebody's opinion that I trust that much says something that high about the film, I, I tend to get a bit of a uh, anxiousness, ex excitement. I, I was really fired up about this movie, which perhaps unfairly, but you know, expecting the next Halloween or the answer to Halloween, you go into this film and you, um, I, I'm dying to know the budget of this film because I really think that there's corners cut for the sake of budget. Not, no coverage in a lot of shots, um, which is me making excuses. But again, if, if I didn't know anything that I do, um, if I'm just soaking this up as a film and somebody told me you're going to love it, it's like Halloween. Well, I don't know if, if I would never talk to that person again. Nothing against the, Well, you know, it's, it's, I, I, I can't, I can't talk about this movie anymore. Megan Friedel Johnson, please call me. I'd love to have a, a artistic debate about this film because I'm, I'm curious to see if, if maybe some of my theories are wrong or, or not. Or I'm just an asshole. Which also happens to be the first movie I saw of 2017. Death Race 2050. Ooh. Um, if there's any credit to give to this film, it's that they try to do the camp of the original film, like the, the Sly Stallone version. Um, which I guess is admirable, but other than that, the movie just doesn't really cut it um, and yeah like I, like I was saying earlier if if you take if you take the budget of this film or, or the the production value of something like death race 2050 and and put that extra time into something like ice cream truck who knows how switched things would be but alas death race 2050 it, it's got a a hokey it's, it's got more of an original feel. It's definitely not your Jason Statham death race, but uh, that that's not enough. You, you gotta make a good movie around that. Um, Resident Evil, please don't do the Friday the 13th thing. If this is the final chapter, you earned it. Uh, unwatchable. It, it really is difficult to make out Lots of things that are happening in the movie. Retconning galore in the movie. Um, sh I mean, I'd like to say that they were decent action scenes, but I don't know what I saw. Friday the 13th did the final chapter thing and that ended up being 40% of the timeline. So please, please Resident Evil, just stop. You, you can't, you can't. There's a big difference between Friday the 13th, the final chapter, and Resident Evil, the final chapter. Friday the 13th, the final chapter, was shot on a tripod. Robert De Niro playing a comedian. Yeah, I don't, I don't take offense to this at all. Kind of unique to see the film open with Robert De Niro on a stage that I've graced. I've performed at, at Governors in Levittown quite a few times. So th there's that. By some six degrees of Kevin Bacon way, I opened for Robert De Niro. Um, I could safely say that I outperformed him too. 
Um, yeah, don't don't call this movie the comedian. He, he he plays a comedian, and then a love story happens. Just it's a funny story, maybe. Hmm. Chips. Well, you, you took you took an old TV show that was on network television and threw a bunch of curses into it. Um, I, I don't know if major studios just think, all right, well, this worked for 21 Jump Street, so let's just, let's just do that. Um, it didn't work. It's not that funny. And I don't, I don't, I don't know very many people who are fans of the original show Chips, let alone people who, who thought this was necessary. But it happened and now it can go away. Another one of my major disappointments, especially considering what it was coming off of, that's Cult of Chucky, which, uh, again, this must have been the year of retconning because they had such a good setting off point with Curse of Chucky. Now, they kind of opened the film with the same tone, but that that's really kind of where it ends the, the movie just takes all these different turns and starts doing different things with certain characters that you're probably used to um i mean if you want something fresh i guess it's fresh i i, I don't understand people who think that that certain things need to be fresh in horror franchises um, Yet Jason doesn't need to be a bunch of different people who don't look like a dude in a hockey mask. Um, Chucky doesn't need a bunch of different Chucky. Never mind the explanation behind how that's possible. Just disappointing. Really disappointing. Number 72, Get the Girl. Um, there's nobody to root for in this movie. The girl, maybe. Uh, it, it's presented in a really awkward fashion. It, it's not quite as harmful as you would think, but it's awfully predictable, I guess I would say. I, I was kind of hoping for something a little bit more, but, uh, you know, independent, low-budget movie that really really looks good at the very least if, if you take the story away there's there's moments where it, it it's quite flashy looking um, I don't like the characters in this movie though I don't like the story so much it was kind of predictable uh, not the worst thing I've seen this year clearly <laughs> rough night oh oh is that the description of when I watched this movie <laughs> this is great. great. Very bad things. The female version. That's it. Uh, if you'd like to see some, if you saw this and you thought, "Wow, I just wish they could do a little bit more with it," just go see Very Bad Things. There you have it. Number 70, which I may get some heat for this, the Belko experiment. Not a big fan. Sure, it feels like a bunch of things. It feels like Saw meets Exam meets Office Space. But uh, for that, I, I just kind of... It's, it's neither of those three. I would rather watch Saw if I want that element of a film. I'd rather... Watch Exam if I want that element of a film. I'd rather watch Office Space if I want that element of a film. Um, good actors. There's there's a bunch of decent roles. Uh, this year, I'll probably get a little bit closer to the mediocre stuff in this list, in this portion of the list, because um, I didn't see too much Drek. And I, I, I would say that the Belko experiment just, just didn't do it for me. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying it didn't do it for me. Number 69, Win It All. Um, Netflix movie, again, uh, the blow is softened due to the fact that you could, you could watch this in your home. You're not paying $20 and driving and wasting a bunch of time to go to a theater to see this. 
Um, it's like it, it seems like this portion of the list is a bunch of movies where I, I say, well, there's a better version of it. Go watch Blank. Win it all, I'm sorry. Go watch Rounders. Go watch Mississippi Grind. Better versions. A um, little different. They're both a little different. They both take different elements of the same thing and and do it better. But um, I don't know. I have, it, there's certain aspects of my actual life that when I'm around them in fictional territory, it's just like, mm, that's not good enough. Like Molly's Game which I'll talk about later, presents that world really well. Win it all, not so much. Um, harmless. Is it hysterical? No. Did I chuckle a couple of times? Yes. Um, will I ever watch it again? Probably not. Um, this the less you pay for it, the, the less harm I feel it'll do to you. Uh, unnoteworthy. David Brent, Life on the Road. Kind of disappointing because uh, such a strong character. Ricky Gervais, the more I think about it, the more I don't know of a film that Ricky Gervais is as funny as Ricky Gervais is in real life. Ricky Gervais in film that isn't him in the office isn't that funny. It, it's not as good as him. Uh, his stand-up act is hysterical. Him in, in, in like interviews and stuff, he's really funny. For some reason scripted him, even if he's writing the script, not quite as funny. It's just kind of, or just to me at least, it's, um, again, we're, we're at a point where, you know, th th these movies are just kind of could have been better, could have been worse. This is my mediocre portion, and uh, David Brent, uh, all right. Was it necessary? Probably not. Netflix has it, so yeah. again, watch it at home. This is like a string of Netflix movies, number 66, Voyeur, a documentary about a dude who cut out a hole in a ceiling and was spying on people in a hotel. Uh, unique idea. The documentary was, you know, again, it's an, it's another thing that you're you're ingesting at home on Netflix. So it, it I don't know. If I paid to see this documentary, I'd be, I'd be a little. Eh, all right, that was okay. That was a waste. Uh, but yeah, it's just a, a good time killer. It's it's when you have stuff like Making a Murderer on Netflix. You, you kind of you think this bar is set, and then you watch something like Voyeur, and it's like, okay, this is this is a lifetime special. Whatever that channel is that plays all those killer documentaries, help! My wife is poisoning me. Um, uh, guys who cheat then die. Uh, whatever, whatever those. It should be on that network. Number sixty-five: The Most Hated Woman in America, another Netflix film. Uh, Melissa Leo does a decent job in this movie. Um, it's based on a true story. It's okay. Um, not that great. Uh, the ability to pause this movie and then go do something and come back. and That certainly helps. And I don't think that says much for a movie. I, I, was, I was perfectly shoulder shruggy about it so yeah yeah forgettable For, uh, it's, uh, uh, there's stuff about it I, I, I the only fact that i know about the movie is the title melissa leo being old and being oh wait i don't know if i get that to spoiler never mind there's very little i remember about this movie and that, and that kind of says something about this portion of the list 64 what happened to monday um yeah, really neat um, idea. Numi Rapace, Numi Rapeface, Numi Rapeface, Numi, whatever the shit her name is, she's there seven times and she's playing all seven sisters. A uh, bit of a Matrix E feel to the movie with some of the special effects and stuff. Um, 
it's nothing you haven't seen before. Uh, and again, another movie that's on Netflix that, that softens the blow. <clears throat> so, I, I mean, I guess these movies, if uh, the, like this last string of movies is stuff that thankfully it's on Netflix because if you paid blank amount to see it, I'd be a little bit more pissed. But uh, Harmless, nothing that's sticking with me but Harmless. Number 63, Power Rangers. See now, this is, uh, this is probably the beginning of me saying that these movies are kind of okay. And, and that's a testament just to just how much I haven't seen this year and just how much I didn't really see it if I, unless I wanted to. Uh, 63 is Power Rangers, and I kind of had an okay time with it. So it's from here out, it's going to be a bunch of movies that I kind of am okay with. So yeah, Power Rangers certainly could have been worse, could have been uh, a lot more terrible. I don't know why Transformers can't make movies like this, but yeah, okay time. Not that big a fan of the series, so perhaps take that with a grain of salt, but decent movie, decent origin, fun ending, and who knows if they're ever going to make another one, which is kind of a letdown because I think they they let you believe that there was going to be more coming, but oh, oh, modern Hollywood. And we're back to Netflix. Brad Pitt in War Machine. Um, this is a movie that I thought was okay. The message was there. It wasn't sent properly. Um, and again, it's not really a, a message that we haven't heard before. Um, it's on Netflix. If you have the membership, you, you, it's free to watch. It's okay. It, it, it wants to say more, it wants to do more, it just doesn't execute it as efficiently as I would think they'd like you to think they were doing. But, okay. And last on this portion of the list is number 61, another movie produced by Netflix, The Hitman's Bodyguard. I'm a big fan of Ryan Reynolds, and I guess after Deadpool, the bar's kind of been set somewhere. And to think him and Samuel L. Jackson in the same movie together, I'm thinking, oh, the guy from Deadpool and the guy from Die Hard 3 are together. This should be a fucking awesome action movie. And not so much. It, it has its fun moments. It's just not quite as funny and or fun, action-packed, as I'd like to see. Um, yeah, so that's that, 61, and again, I'm not saying that I didn't like it, I, I, I had an okay time with it, just when we get higher and higher and higher to this list, you'll see that there's stuff that I just really liked more. Um, so that does it here for this list, 80 to 61, next we'll have 60 to 41. If you saw any of the stuff that was in this list, do me a favor and comment down below. Let me know what you thought of those movies, uh, or let me know what your bottom film of the year is. And uh, we should be back relatively soon with the next bunch, so keep an eye plugged. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, just getting back into the whole YouTube thing, so if I missed something, say something. Have a day. Um, I'm a big fan of Rob, Robin, Robin Roberts. I'm a... <laughs>